What are the three types of aquarium filtration? Aquariums require filtration. That's pretty well common knowledge, even for people who have never had an aquarium themselves. But there are actually three different types of aquarium filtration, mechanical, chemical, and biological. And I say them in that order specifically because that's the order they should be in as water passes through them, but I'll explain why in just a bit. Mechanical filtration is any type of filter media or material that is designed to trap and hold solid waste. Sponge or foam pads, filter floss, filter socks, and fleece sheets, to name a handful of examples, are all forms of mechanical filtration that are designed to trap and hold solid waste from the water so you can easily remove it from the tank by throwing it away or rinsing it out and then reusing it. In doing so, you'll be removing that waste before it begins to break down in the water into harmful substances like ammonia. You'll also be keeping the water looking visually clean by removing those little bits of waste and debris that would otherwise be floating around inside the aquarium. Mechanical filtration can also come in the form of protein skimmers, which are able to remove liquid and microscopic waste from salt water through a process called foam fractionation, which basically uses bubbles to attract hydrophilic proteins and particles away from the water, drawing them up and into a collection cup that you can dump out periodically. Chemical filtration is any type of filter media that is designed to trap or remove different types of chemical compounds. Aquarium carbon is usually what comes to mind when most people think about chemical media, since it is often included with aquarium filters. It can remove things like coloration and smell from the water, along with all sorts of other unwanted compounds. There are many types of chemical media though, like granular ferric oxide or GFO, which is fantastic for removing phosphate and specialty media like ion exchange resin beads for removing all kinds of different contaminants. Chemical filtration is super handy for treating issues that pop up or even as a preventative measure, but it isn't strictly necessary for day-to-day -day filtration. Biological filtration comes in many forms and ultimately refers to any method of filtration that utilizes natural biological processes to remove or convert organic waste in the aquarium that is produced by the inhabitants or through feeding the inhabitants. When we feed the aquarium, that food goes into our fish and comes out as waste. And any food that isn't eaten also comes out as waste. And if those fish perish, that also turns into waste and quickly breaks down into ammonia. Ammonia is incredibly toxic and even at low levels can quickly cause your fish invertebrates or corals to suffer and even perish. Thankfully, we can introduce an army of beneficial bacteria that will happily convert ammonia to nitrate in a process known as the nitrogen cycle. These bacteria like to live on surfaces like the porous structures within live rock or specifically made biological media that is often some form of sintered glass, limestone, lava rock, or ceramic that can be added to an aquarium filter. These microscopic bacteria will live on and within the media and once established will be virtually self-sustaining and create the foundation of your aquarium's ecosystem, keeping the water free of harmful ammonia. There are also other forms of biological filtration that utilizes bacteria to help keep other potentially harmful nutrients under control. Biopellet reactors, zeophyte reactors, and liquid carbon dosing being the most common. You can also use the power of algae and macroalgae in a refugium or a scrubber to help uptake those excess nutrients, which is also a completely natural biological solution that can also help to provide shelter for amphipods and copepods to proliferate, which not only graze on the biofilms and algae, but also act as an all natural food source to help feed the aquarium. Like I mentioned earlier, when you're stacking this media inside of a filter, like a canister filter, water typically passes through them in a specific order, and there's a good reason for that. First, the water will pass through the mechanical filtration to remove any physical debris and waste, which prevents any of that debris from clogging up the chemical and biological media. If they get clogged, they would work much less efficiently and would require cleaning more often which is why that's important. Next, water travels through the chemical media, removing other unwanted compounds before it finally reaches the biological media where the physically and chemically cleaned water can easily travel through the tiny network of open pores in that bio media, giving the bacteria inside of it access to any available ammonia in the water so they can quickly convert it to much less harmful nitrate. Now I know I used a canister filter as an example, but I'll admit canister filters aren't the most popular choice for saltwater and reef aquariums. That contest was won by sumps by a landslide for a few big reasons that I'm gonna go over in this video right here. Check it out.